Hey everyone, welcome back to another easy programming tutorial. Today I want to show you something new, something called bubble sort. It's it's a way to sort uh, objects, um, the variables from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. You can do it with both string, integer, anything you want. Uh, this isn't the most efficient type. Uh, there's another one called the index sort. That one's actually better if you have a lot of arrays, a lot of variables, and you want to just move the the subscript rather than move everything else. What the bubble sort does is moves everything, everything else around the subscripts, which is inefficient if you have a large program. But this is similar to what the, how the index sort works, so I thought I'd show this to you first. Even though it's inefficient, this is going to be a small program. So uh, what you see in front of you is the basic startup of any program that I usually do. We have include IO stream using namespace standard int main. And for this, you're going to have to know arrays. If you don't know how to use arrays, I recommend you look at that the tutorial that I made uh, a few months ago. It covers arrays. I have made another one called parallel arrays. You don't need to know parallel arrays for this one. For the index or one, you might you will probably have to know in parallel arrays as well. I'll also be using the for loop a couple times. Uh, I'll keep this simple. Uh, I won't use any functions or anything. You can use functions if you want. You can move things around if you want. Again, this is just a tutorial. So the first thing I want to start out with is just by declaring a few variables. In this program, we'll declare seven numbers and then we'll just sort it from largest to smallest or smallest to largest, you know. We'll do both ways. So we'll do int and then num 7. You can use any variable name. I'm just using num and umb. And 7 is the amount of numbers in the array. It'll go from 0. It'll go from 0 to 6. Uh, remember to close it. And since we'll be using a for loop, we'll do int i. And for this one, you'll also need a, a nested loop when you're actually sorting. So I'm going to declare a J. It's going to be part of the nested loop. The first thing you'd want to do is prompt the user to input the seven numbers. So we'll do four. I equals to zero. I is less than or equal to six. And I plus plus. Again, if you have to know how the for loop works, I recommend you look at that tutorial. C out. We'll ask the user, please enter number. C in, we'll do num i. So if it's zero, it'll be num zero, num one, num two, etc. We'll close it. And this will get all seven numbers one at a time. We'll need another for loop. This is the sort. Uh, this is where you'll be using the nested loop. I'll explain this to you after I read this up. i equals to zero, and i is less than or equal to five. i plus plus. The first level of the nested loop, as you can see, is i is less than or equal to 5. It's not 6. Even though there's 7 values, it's always going to be 1 less than the max value. The max value here is 6. It's going to be 5 over here. I'll show that to you why as well. You'll do the nested loop with the 4, j equals to 1, i plus 1 actually, and then j is less than or equal to 6, and then j plus plus. Here we're doing j equals to i plus 1 because every time this loop runs, we want j to be 1 ahead. So if i is 3, j will start up at 4 and go up to 6. If i is 5, i will stop at 5 and j will go up to 5 plus 1, which is 6. That'll be 6. It'll run once. We don't want to, and as you can see here, this is the max value, and this is not. If you put 6 here, it'll run, it'll compare 6 with 6. It's going to do an extra calculation for no reason. Uh, it might give you an error depending on how everything is coded. So it's better to just do it like this. You know, again, this is how I've been doing it. So if you have a different way of doing it, feel free. Uh, but yeah, this is the basic syntax of it. You open the loop. For this, for the nested loop, we're going to have to declare a local variable. We're going to do int temp. The temp is going to hold uh, the value of i temporarily, of num i temporarily, and then it's going to 
throw it back into numj if it needs to change. And for this, you're going to have to know the if function as well, the if statement. If you need to know how the if statement works, I have a tutorial for that as well. So we'll do num i. At first, it's going to be num0. Uh, we'll input a number. Is greater than num j. Num j. So if it's saying if num i, let's say num i is 1, and num j is let's say 0, if i is greater than that, then we'll do, remember open brackets, we'll do temp equals to num i, and then num i equals to num j, and then we'll do uh, num j equals to temp. I'll explain this to you, remember close this closes the if statement, this closes the first for loop, I mean the nested for loop, and then this is the original for loop. So you have three brackets. I'll explain this. Here, temp doesn't have a value. You assign the value of temp to whatever num i is. That's the value of whatever this is. Once you do that, temp holds the value, actually, uh, temporarily. And then here, num i, we're going to change num i. It's saying if num i is greater than num j, so if num i is four and the num j is three is going to take the value of num j which is three is going to put it into num i and then we're going to have to change num j because the value of three is moved to num i and j is going to take temp at which point temp would be four you know if num i was four and then the the sorting will be three and four instead of four and three uh, so yeah i mean you'll see it in action how it works so this is basically the how the sorting works. You'll need two nested for loops. You need uh, a variable. You can you don't it doesn't have to be a local variable here. You can declare it up here. I just did it down here. And then you need an if statement. And remember to close everything. And then we're going to output the results. So we'll need another for loop, the third for loop. We'll do i equals to zero. I is less than or equal to six. It's going to be the same one as the first for loop here. You can copy and paste here, but I'll just type it up, I++. plus plus. C out, C out, num i, do ENDL, and close it. There, it'll just display one number after the other. I'll do um, ENDL here, add a space between the the CN here and then the the output here bottom here so let's run it press F5 to debug you, know, you build it it compiles and let's run it it says please enter number so let's do randomly I'm gonna choose the first seven we'll do five and then three and then four and then six and then seven and then one and then this is going to be the seventh one, right? Yep, seventh one. So uh, I'm going to put two in here. When it outputs everything, uh, it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's an extra line in between because of the extra E and DL. That's basically it. If you want to do it from largest to highest, you can do that as well. We'll do you just change that from greater than to less than. And let's run it. Again, we'll do six, five, two, seven, three, one. We'll do zero. And here's seven, six, five, three, two, one, zero. It's pretty simple. And this doesn't work with just integer. You can use string, you can use character. It does recognize those values. If you want to see how that works, we'll do character. Uh, let's just keep num just to keep it simple and then let's do this you know just, just so we don't change anything too much we'll do please enter number and it should be please enter letter I just changed the string we'll do a R B K L E P here it's from highest to lowest it'll be R P L K E B A it recognizes both lower and uppercase letters and then if you want to do it from front to back you just change this to greater than and then we'll do run it 
there. Please enter again. It should be letter. We'll do J K E B A R T. We'll see A B E J K R T. It works with strings as well. I mean, you basically get the point. And here, you don't need the system pass. Uh, I showed you my last tutorial. You can do C N. Do C N dot ignore. And C N dot get. It does the same thing. I'll just change this back to int. Please enter number five, four, eight, two, three, ten, nine, and there you go. Two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. It's pretty simple. Uh, again, this is inefficient if you have a lot of if you have a lot of values, a lot of variables. If you have parallel arrays, this doesn't really work that well. Uh, for parallel arrays, you can use index sort. Hopefully, I'll show that to you next time. I know someone requested that I show them stacks. I'm working my way up to that. Uh, that'll probably take a few videos as well. Well, this is bubble sort for you. It's pretty easy. It's pretty simple, even though it's inefficient. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe.